Artists are usually very self-critical, and as much as personal criticism can be great for improvement, oftentimes it can be a downfall. It can cause you to hesitate, leave work unfinished, lead to anxiety and depression, the list goes on. Here I'm going to dive into some hard lessons for artists and do my best to give advice on these topics. A lot of these are things I still struggle with because, you know, we ain't perfect. So let's get into it. Your ideas aren't always going to be great. In the beginning, as much as the quality of your work is important, volume is also very important for growth in your portfolio or business. So what that means is sometimes an idea you think is great simply falls short, which is fine. I think it's important to get the idea out there, make the art and find out what works rather than overthinking what you think your audience might want to see. In my own work, I make a lot of paintings that are obscure and clearly not everyone's cup of tea, but I do it anyway because it's my vision and I need to find out what works in my own business. The key is finding a solid balance between quality of work and volume of work. Don't get stuck only studying and sketching. It's important to develop the habit of making finished, fully rendered artwork. Studying and sketching is a crucial part of your practice, but I've seen artists get trapped in this space where it's all they're doing. And if that's your goal, then that's fine, but in my opinion, it gets to a point where you're honestly not being that productive. If the goal is to make completely finished, eye-catching work, if you have a vision for your overall portfolio, you have to actively work on the images you want to make. That's the only way you're going to improve on that specific vision. Yes, use reference or study for certain aspects of your artwork, but try to balance your practice where you're focusing more on using that lovely imagination you've got. Put your brain power into making the important work first. Let study sessions become a smaller percentage of your overall output as you improve. The important art you want to make deserves the best of you. Even dedicating one day of the week to studying anatomy, for example. Then use your other time for working on fully rendering a painting or drawing. You will find what works best for you. Discouragement is natural. You are human. If you're feeling discouraged, take a break, change your scenery, take a shower, refresh your mind. These feelings are completely normal. Sometimes we're riding the edge of burnout. Try your best to avoid this. It's sometimes a good idea to pull back and recalibrate what we're doing and what direction we are going in. Be thoughtful, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. Comparison can rob you of your creative spark. If you find yourself always comparing your work and your output to others, that's a slippery slope into disillusion. If this is happening, try to consume less media and focus on your own imagination and ideas. I've personally been spending less time checking notifications and allowing my mind to be held captive by these applications. Somewhere within you and the ethos are seeds of ideas that only you get to plant. Reach for these ideas, engage the muse, practice meditation, practice being at ease, channel your own visions, pay attention to yourself and what you can offer the world, forget the noise. It's okay to copy, analyze, and really study other artists' work. Overall, you definitely want to develop your own style and vision, but in the beginning as you're progressing, it can be and will be beneficial in some form to copy your masters. This is the natural way of things. Being self-taught isn't exactly real. For someone who didn't go to art school, I can confidently say I'm not entirely self-taught. I mean, I suppose I've made all these sacrifices on my own, but I've learned from the great masters, I've studied my favorite artists extensively, I've dissected paintings layer by layer trying to learn how they did it, I've read books on form and anatomy, light and shadow. You've got to put in the work. So especially in the beginning, don't be afraid of copying aspects of your favorite artists and scraping the internet for knowledge. It will help you improve substantially, but do it within reason. Take all that you learn and integrate it into your own work. Developing your personal style comes with repetition and making things your own. Don't be afraid to take time off. If your intention is to make a business out of your art practice, then it will be wise to craft a schedule. And time off can be just as important as time on. I know we exist in this hustle culture, but please, allow yourself to get some solid sleep, allow yourself to rest your mind, and take care of the important things in your life that also need attention. You're not going to forget how to be an artist, you are an artist. If you have to take away anything from what I'm saying here, it's finding a balance in your life that works for you. That's the goal here. We all have complicated lives. Do your best with it.